Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Greetings, friends, and welcome to episode four of the Game Diplomat Podcast, a bite-sized show about great games you might have missed. I'm your host, Josh Augustine, and today, whew, today's a tough one. Today I want to tell you about how I shepherded a caravan filled with ancient members of a dying race to the end of the world, only to watch everything I cared about burn down around me because of the choices I made. So this all happened in the Banner Saga, which is a wonderful story-driven strategy game that forces you to make tough choices as a leader of a community trying to survive in a doomed world. So it's a turn-based strategy game is created by Stoic and published by Versus Evil. It was released on PC consoles and mobile in January 2014. It also has a sequel that came out earlier this year, but you really need to start with the original. The story choices you make carry over, and Banner Saga 2 is more of an act 2 of the same story, a continuation of it, rather than a separate game, so you really want to play them in order. There's also a tabletop D&D style board game as well, which I haven't tried, but it looks super cool on Kickstarter at least. So before we jump into how the game works, I want to talk real fast about spoilers. There will be none, hopefully. <laughs> it's kind of hard to talk about this game and the reasons why I love it without giving spoilers, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to talk about some early choices presented to you, but won't talk about the consequences based on the choices you make. So I'll just present the options that'll be given to you, and hopefully in kind of a generic enough way that it's not going to ruin any big uh, plot points, right? Um, I will talk about the game's world in general and its history, which you do uncover in pieces over the course of the game, but I think it's really important to understanding kind of the game and explaining it to you. So my basic rule of thumb is this. This podcast should not reduce the amount of fun you have playing through the game at all. So I'm hoping to hit that goal, but let me know what you, how you want me to handle spoilers in the future. Uh, I can save them all and give the, like a big warning before I enter the spoiler segment and talk freely about it there or something. I don't know. Send ideas. All right, so here's the basic premise of the Banner Saga. You play as two different characters alternating between their stories, and both are leading different groups of people in what looks like the apocalypse of their fantasy world. You're trying to keep these groups together, alive, and happy, all while trying to travel the world to get to where you need to be to accomplish the great things that you think need to be done. Boom. How was that for a vague, spoiler-free description? Oh, yeah. So let's talk about the world for a second before we dive into the game mechanics. It's the standard kind of fantasy style. People have swords, shields, they're shooting bows. There's some people who can wield magic and it's super powerful and scary and people don't know what to do with them. And the two, ra the two main races are humans and Varl. And Varl are basically giant Vikings that cannot die of natural causes but also cannot reproduce. So the Varl that do exist have been around forever. They do age but it seems to be really slow and they don't seem to die of old age. Um, they can die in combat though and many have. So the third big player is the mysterious invaders, the Dredge. They're basically Mayan-looking robot monsters. They're really weird at first. They really stand out as like, this doesn't belong in a fantasy world. Uh, but it's a really cool, unique style. Um, and they destroy everything in their path. They've invaded the world multiple times. And the humans in Varl typically team up, you know, to fight them off. And then when the Dredge aren't there, they go back to killing each other. But at some point during these huge wars where the Dredge have invaded... The gods of the world died. It's not clear how or why, but they're dead. And as if that wasn't a bad enough omen for the world, right? The game kicks off on the verge of a third massive dredge invasion. And it's heralded by a ton of apocalyptic events that seem to indicate that the world itself is dying. It's ending. Just existence on this <laughs> in this world will end. Um, and so that's what you're thrown into at the start of the Banner Saga. And you're supposed to find a way to keep your people safe in this apocalypse. The main character is just a simple widower who leads his daughter and village away from the dredge invasion. And then the other time you act as one of the Varl at the head of a royal entourage of humans and Varls trying to learn to work together. And they're heading in the opposite direction. So you decide their fate and create the story through three different types of gameplay throughout the game. Uh, you choose your own adventure dialogues. Uh, there's a resource management travel sequences where you're traveling across world and it takes time and you need resources and people get happy and unhappy. And then there's turn-based combat. 
So in the choose your own adventure sections, you make decisions as an individual through dialogue trees and action options, just like kind of you would like in an RPG sometimes. Like, how do you respond when your daughter, who's an epic hunter, right? A great hunter helped you hunt deer and stuff for the village, but she doesn't want to hurt other humans who are attacking the caravan. What do you tell her? Uh, Sometimes it's like Oregon Trail. A wheel breaks on the supply cart as you're going, but you're in a spooky forest. Do you stop to repair it or leave it and keep going? And each of those has consequences. And so that's how the travel sequences work. Um, It's more those sorts of options, less dialogue and more, ooh, something happened to the caravan. As a leader, as the leader of the caravan, what do you want them to do? And so you're always trying to balance how many people you have, how many supplies they consume each day, and what their morale is. And the combat segments are classic turn-based combat. So each battlefield is different, but it's usually a squarish grid of tiles with some terrain or architecture providing line of sight or height advantages or blocking certain routes. And you see the enemies, and then you get to place your guys down and then take turns fighting. Over the As you progress through the story, you collect heroes, some with unique abilities or attacks, and you can upgrade them and equip them with different items to, make, to give them new stats or different perks uh, to make them stronger. And the Varl, right, they're the massive Viking dudes. They're huge melee fighters that actually take up four squares on the board. And they're typically your big beefy brawlers that you're keeping on the front line to keep everyone busy. And then the humans kind of dance on the outskirts or maneuver inside the cracks. Because some, some, if it's like a one-lane path, Varl can't fit. But humans can sneak through there and kind of flank. And so they're kind of taking advantage of the chaos and get, make their weaker attacks count stronger that way. And then through all of that, you're trying to balance the needs of your caravans, which require resources and people to thrive, with the needs of the world in danger of being entirely destroyed, right? When you encounter other groups, how do you interact with them? How do you deal with the scarcity of resources that you have and the small number of resources that they have and you both need more? What do you do? Uh, Each of those choices leads to more choices and leave a permanent consequences lingering behind as you progress through the story. You just feel so many emotions about so many characters. It's overwhelming. In a very good way, of course. Man, the music in this game is just beautiful. At times it's inspiring, heroic. Other times it's mournful, like a funeral dirge, which is just so fitting for this balance in this world. It's just so cool. Um, But let's talk about seven reasons why you should play the Banner Saga right now. Number one, every choice matters. So I mentioned the choose your own adventure kind of feel to the game, right? And this is where the game shines brightest. You're constantly making choices and enough of those choices have very immediate or recognizable consequences. Like you have to choose what to do and then immediately it tells you what happens. Or shortly after something happens that you realize, ooh, I bet that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't made this choice earlier. It just makes you believe that every single decision you make is important. I agonized for several minutes over some of them and was just terrified by what would happen. And that's the thing. It's it's not the simple, do you want to be the good guy or do you want to be the bad guy? Choices like Mass Effect or something gives you. Those are easy choices to make for most people. These are morally gray or simply not moral questions facing you. And they have consequences that you can't predict. Sometimes it doesn't seem like there's any good choice. And sometimes the good choice you make backfires on you. And sometimes you have to make the bad choice to keep your caravan together. You make the bad choice so others can kind of keep their hands clean and you be the bad guy just because it has to be done. The Banner Saga just creates an incredibly compelling, sympathetic narrative that makes you care deeply about every single character and every culture and every community that you run across, which is fairly cruel when you're traveling through a dying world where it seems like everybody's doomed, right? (laughs) You're surrounded by hardships and sorrow and loss, but you have to keep moving. You have to keep these people together. You're often left wondering if you made the right choice as you leave the consequences behind and move forward. The caravan's always moving forward. And you wonder if there was even a right choice at all. It's it's haunting in, in so many really cool ways. Oh, and you can't undo, right? You can't choose when to save and load back. Every choice is permanent and weighty. 
I want to play this game several more times to see what all the choices I could have made would do. Uh, can I save more people this time? Can I avoid the tragic errors I made before? There's just so much cool stuff here. All right. Reason number two, it makes you feel things, like lots of things. Even sociopaths would feel something played in this game. This is the story told at the end of a dying world. The gods are dead. Some of the people in your caravan were there when it happened. The big picture is dangerous, scary, and depressing, but, but inside all that, there's room for joy and hope and victory in the little things, in the relationships that you build with your family and friends, and the common bonds you forge with complete strangers. As you unite together to face the inevitable onslaught coming at you, the strength you wield to, when you defend the weak around you that can't defend themselves, at every corner you're defying the odds and trying to find a way to save this world, or at least its people, right? It's inspiring and depressing in equal measures. Number three, it makes you think. Now, beyond the moment-to-moment -moment feelings, the Banner Saga is one of the only three games that I've ever played that put me in like a contemplation coma. That's the best word I could come up with it after I finished playing it. It's just that feeling when you just can't do anything else, but just sit there and think about what you just experienced. I started this game at lunchtime, expecting to play for half an hour while I ate. And instead, I played for eight hours straight. And then when I was finished, I just kind of sat on the floor of my living room for half an hour, just thinking about the world, the people, the story that I had just been a part of, just trying to soak it all in. My mind wasn't ready for anything else. I just had to savor this wonderful story I'd just been a part of. See, the Banner Saga isn't just a game. It's a story, I think, that transcends its medium and transports you into a separate world. In the same way that Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, those universes feel real. I felt that same way about the Banner Saga. All right, reason number four, the turn-based combat. It's not all story in this game, right? The turn-based combat is solid. It's not the reason you should play this game, but I think the armor and health mechanics are super fun. So basically, each character has two core stats, armor and strength. Strength is both your health and your attack damage, so as you get weaker, as you get hurt more, you deal less damage, which is kind of fun. And armor is a resource pool that flatly subtracts from any incoming damage attack. So say you have five armor, an attack comes in for six damage, you'd only take one damage to your strength. And the armor stays the same. So when you attack an enemy, you have to decide whether you're going to attack their strength or their armor. So against big monsters, you have to chip away at the armor before you can make any headway on their actual strength. It's a really cool way to balance it and give you different enemies that you have to take different tactics against. It's simple, but it's fun. And the challenge level was just right for me on easy mode. It let me not worry about being super into the combat or min-maxing the stats or the gear and just worry about getting through the story and, and using the characters in combat that I wanted to fight with, that I wanted fighting alongside each other to kind of tell my story rather than having to worry about like, oh, well, they don't synergize as well together. But that said, I want to try the harder difficulties the next time I play through and see if I can get more into that side of the challenge. All right, reason number five to play this game. There are a lot of surprise twists, but no spoilers, right? So send me an email after you play the game so we can talk about some of these twists and traps because I've died to talk about it, but I'm not going to because I don't want to ruin the game for anybody listening. I'll just leave you with one scenario you're offered at one point in the game. There's a crazy guy in a city that wants to join your caravan. Do you take him? You can just let your imagination run wild with all the different ways that that could go. Uh, but there's a lot of cool twists. Reason number six. There isn't a single throwaway character in this world. Every person you meet is wonderfully made and intriguingly unique. Even the bad guys, right? The relationship between Rook, the main character, and his daughter throughout all of this is just really well done, too. And as a kind of new father, it's very impactful to me. Their relationship is just really complex and beautiful. Um, so those characters are what make the story so deep. Every dialogue is interesting, every choice feels important, every death is agonizing. And this is the most intention-demanding story I've experienced in years, maybe even, dare I say it, a decade! Like I mentioned earlier, I just simply couldn't stop playing this game until I finished it. I'm glad it was only 8 hours long, or else I might have just skipped sleep for days and just kept going. So, reason number 7. This is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played, visually. I swear I'm not going to say this about every game on the podcast because <laughs> I realize now it's just it's a bullet point on all of these. So I need to not say it unless it's like exceptionally so and then just kind of trust that all of these games usually look pretty cool. But I legitimately could not skip it this time. This game is pure art visually. It's intentionally gorgeous in a way that a very few games even attempt because it's really hard to get 
to do well. And this game just goes above and beyond, does it exceptionally. I'd even put it as like a standard that other games trying to do this sort of same kind of simple 2D art stylized. Uh, and it, it's just done in an absolutely perfect way. So go to the blog, look at screenshots and videos, and I'll put in there the launch day trailer as well. It's only one minute long. It kind of gives you a, a quick scan if you don't have time to watch the full live stream. And I, obviously I can't show it to you here, but here is at least the audio for it. Oh, and just for some context, uh, it's the main character, Rook, talking to his daughter named Alette. And so Alette is the other voice. Alette. Listen, there's nothing you could have possibly... Dad, stop. Last night, I had a dream. I dreamt we never left home. We never had to run. Never had to kill. Why are we alive when even the gods are dead? I awoke and I knew why we're still alive. Because we choose to be. All right, so if the Banner Saga sounds like a game that you might enjoy, uh, you can buy it for anywhere between five and twenty dollars right now because it's kind of an older game, right? So there's different prices and sales happening on each platform that you can buy it on because it's on PC, consoles, and mobile. So I'm gonna put links to all the stuff on GameDevMat.com. Right now, the best deal is on Good Old Games. It's for sale for five bucks. But check all the links just to look for the best option before you buy. Um, on the same blog there, GameDevMat.com, we'll have everything we talked about here, plus a video of me playing the game. And I've actually been doing an extra live stream kind of during the week after I post this of the game that we covered just to kind of show off more of the game. So if there's something in particular you want to check out in the game, let me know. Or hey, even better than buying it, you can get the Banner Saga for free right now. Versus Evil, the publisher, gave us five keys to give away on the show, so thank you very much to them. That's awesome. And you can win one of the keys by answering this trivia question. Which of these is not a god in the Banner Saga universe? Lauga, the goddess of love. Dundur, the god of beards. Heimdall, the god of vengeance. Beorulf, the god of bewing. Or Ingrid, the goddess of knowledge. So one of those is not actually a god in the Banner Saga universe. Just email or tweet me your guesses and you'll be entered. All links for all that stuff is on GameDiplomat.com. The correct answer to last week's trivia question about personality quirks in Darkest Dungeon was somnophobia, which like everybody guessed. So I apparently didn't do a good job of making up a fake answer that time, but hopefully better this time. Um, we got a record 15 guesses sent in, which was awesome. We had like three to five on the first couple episodes. So the 15 was huge. This was a big change. Thank you to everyone who participated. Um, we only had two keys to give away last time. We have five this time, so keep sending in your guesses. Uh, so I chose winners randomly from everyone who guessed the correct answer. So congratulations to Anthony Molinaro and Chesky, who answered correctly and each won a copy of Darkest Dungeon on Steam. And that's a challenging dungeon crawler with roguelike tendencies. You can learn more about it on episode three. And if you enjoyed the show, you can leave a review on iTunes or join our Slack channel, which I would absolutely love. Chesky's in there. Hey, you can come talk to the winner himself. We celebrated with gifts, just spamming in the chat channel when he would. Or join our Steam group or support us with cold hard cash. Or hey, just tell your friends about the show. That'd be awesome too. But no matter what, thanks for spending your time with us. I hope you found a fun new game to play. And in the next episode of Game Diplomat, we'll talk about You Must Build a Boat, a clever match three game with RPG combat and permanent progression. We'll see you then.
for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.